Chapter 10, Dribble. I will never forget. Friday, May 10th. It is the most important day of my life. It didn't start out that way. It started out ordinary. I went to school, ate my lunch, I had gym. And then I walked home from school with Jimmy Fargo. We planned to meet outside our special rock in the park as soon as we changed our clothes. In the elevator, I told Henry I was glad summer was coming. Henry said he was glad, too. When I got out of my floor, I walked down the hall, opened the door to my apartment, took off my jacket, hung it in the closet, and I put my books on the table and sat next to my mother's purse. I went straight to my room to check for my clothes and to check dribble. The first thing I noticed was my chain latch was unhooked. My bedroom door was open, and there was a chair smack in the middle of the doorway. I nearly stumbled over it. I ran to my dresser to check Dribble. He wasn't there. His bowl with the rocks and water was there, but Dribble was gone. I got really scared. I thought maybe he died while I was at school, and I didn't know about it. So I rushed to the kitchen and hollered, Mom, where's Dribble? My mother was baking something. My brother sat on the kitchen floor, banging pots and pans. Be quiet, I yelled at Fudge. I can't hear anything with all that noise. What did you say, Peter? My mother asked me. I can't find Dribble. Where is he? You mean he's not in his bowl? My mother asked. I shook my head. Oh, dear. My mother said, I hope he's not crawling around somewhere. You know I don't like the way he smells. I'm going to have to look in the bedrooms. You check in, in here, Peter. My mother hurried off. I looked at my brother. He was smiling. Fudge, do you know where Dribble is? I asked calmly. Fudge kept smiling. Did you take him? Did you, Fudge? I asked not so calmly. Fudge giggled, covered his mouth with his hands. I yelled, where is he? What did you do with my turtle? No answer from Fudge. He banged the pots and pans together. I yanked the pots and pans out of his hands, and I tried to speak softly. Now tell me where Dribble is. Just tell me where my turtle is. I won't be mad if you could tell me. Come on, Fudge, please. Fudge looked up at me. In tummy, he said. What do you mean in tummy? I asked, narrowing my eyes. Dribble in tummy, he repeated. What tummy? I shouted at my brother. This one, Fudge said, rumming my stomach. Dribble is in the tummy right there, right here. I decided to go along with this game. Okay, how do you get in there, Fudge? Fudge stood up, jumped on up and down and sang, I ate him, I ate him, I ate him, and then ran out of the room. My mother came back into the kitchen. Well, I just can't find him anywhere, she said. I looked in the dresser, the drawers, the bathroom, the cabinets, the shower, and the tub. Mom, I said, shaking my head. How could you? How could I what, Peter? Mom asked. How could you let him do it? Let him do what? Let Fudge eat dribble, I screamed. My mother started to mix whatever she was baking. Don't be silly, Peter. He said, dribble is a turtle. He ate dribble, I insisted. Peter Warren Hatcher, stop saying that, Mom hollered. Well, ask him. Go ahead, ask him. I told, I told her. Fudge was standing in the kitchen doorway with a big grin on his face. My mother picked him up and patted his head. Fudgy, she said. Tell Mommy where your brother's turtle is. In tummy, Fudge said. What tummy, Mom asked. Mine, Fudge laughed. My mother put Fudge down on the kitchen counter where he couldn't get away from her. Oh, you're fooling Mommy, right? No fool, Fudge said. My mother turned very pale. You really ate your brother's turtle? Big smile from Fudge. You mean you put that thing in your mouth and chewed him up like this? Mom made a believe chewing sound. No, Fudge said, smiling in relief. Crossed my mother's face. Of course you didn't. It's just a joke. She put down Fudge on the floor. Fudge babbled. No chew, no chew, gulp, gulp. All gone, turtle. Down Fudge's tummy. Me and my mother stared at Fudge. You didn't, Mom said. Did so, Fudge said. No, Mom shouted. Yes, Fudge shouted back. Yes? Mom asked weakly, holding onto the chair with both hands. Yes, Fudge beamed. My mother moaned and picked up my brother. Oh, no, my angel, my precious little baby. Oh, no. My mother didn't stop to think about my turtle. She didn't even give Dribble a thought. She didn't even stop to wonder how my turtle liked being swallowed by my brother. She ran to the phone with Fudge, tucked her under one arm, and I followed. Mom dialed the operator and cried, Oh, help. 
This is an emergency. My baby ate a turtle. Stop that laughing, my mother told the operator. Send an ambulance right away, 25 West 68th Street. Mom hung up. She didn't look too well. Tears were running down her face. She put Fudge down on the floor. I couldn't understand why she was so upset. Fudge seemed just fine. Help me, Peter, Mom begged. Get me blankets. I ran into my brother's room. I grabbed two blankets from Fudge's bed. He was following me around with that silly grin on his face. I felt like giving him a punt, a pinch. How could he stand there looking so happy when he had my turtle inside him? I delivered the blankets to my mother. She wrapped Fudge up and then ran to the front door. I followed and grabbed her purse and the hall table. I figured she'd be glad I thought of that. Out in the hall, I pressed the elevator buzzer. We had to wait a few seconds. Mom paced up and down in front of the elevator. Fudge was cradled in her arms. He sucked his fingers and made that slurping sound noise I like. But all I could think of was dribble. Finally, the elevator was out, out going to the floor. There were three people besides Henry. This was an emergency, Mom wailed. The ambulance is waiting downstairs. Please hurry. Yes, Mrs. Hatcher. Of course, Mrs. Hatcher, Henry said. I'll run down. I'll run her down just as fast as I can. No other stops. Someone poked me in the back. Turn around. It was Mr. Rudder. What's the matter? She whispered. It's my brother, I whispered back. He ate my turtle. Mrs. Rusper whispered that to the man next to her, and when he whispered to the lady next to him, who whispered to Henry, I faced front and pretend I didn't hear anything. My mother turned around with Fudgy in her arms and said, That's not funny, not funny at all. But Fudge said, Funny, 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 Fudgy. Everyone except my mother. Everybody laughed except my mother. Elevator opened. Two men dressed in white were waiting on the stretcher. This is the baby? One of them asked. Yes, yes it is. Mom sobbed. Don't worry, lady. We'll be in the hospital in no time. Come, Peter. My mother said, tugging on my sleeve. We're going to ride in the ambulance with Fudge. My mother sat and I climbed in the back of the blue ambulance. I was never in one before. It was kind of neat. Fudge kneeled on the cot and peered out through the window. He waved at the crowd of people who had gathered on the sidewalk. One of the attendants sat in back with us. The other one was driving. What seems to be the trouble, baby, the attendant said. The kid looks pretty healthy to me. He swallowed a turtle, my mother whispered. He did what? The attendant, he ate my turtle. That's what, I told him. My mother covered her face with her hanky and started to cry. Hey, Joe. The attendant called to the driver. Uh, make it snappy. This one swallowed a turtle. That's not funny, my mom insisted. I didn't think so either, considering it was my turtle. We arrived at the back door. The hospital fudgy was whisked away by the two nurses. My mother ran after him. You wait here, young man. Another nurse called me, pointing to the bench. I sat down on the hard wooden bench. I didn't have anything to do. There wasn't any books or magazines spread out like I do when I go to Dr. Cohn's office. So I watched the clock and read the signs on the walls. I found out that I was in the emergency section of the hospital. After a while, the nurse came back. She gave me some paper and crayons. Here you are. Be a good boy and draw some pictures. Your mother will be out soon. I wondered if she knew about Dribble. And that's why she was trying to be nice to me. I didn't feel like drawing pictures. I wondered... What they were doing with Fudge in there. Maybe he wasn't such a bad little guy after all. I remembered that Jimmy Fargo's little cousin once swallowed most the most valuable rock from Jimmy's rock collection. And Mother told me that when I was a little kid, I swallowed a quarter. Still, a quarter. It's not like a turtle. I watched the clock on the wall for an hour and ten minutes. And then the door opened and my mother stepped out with Dr. Cohn. I was surprised to see him. I didn't know he worked at the hospital. Hello, Peter, he said. Hello, Dr. Cohn. Did you get my turtle? Not yet, Peter, he said. But I do have something to show you. Here are some x-rays of your brother. I studied the x-rays. Dr. Cohn pointed things out to me. You see, he said, there's your turtle right there. I looked hard. Will Dribble be in there forever? I asked. No, definitely not. We'll get him out. We have, we gave Fudge some medicine already. He should do the trick here nicely. What kind of medicine, I asked. What trick? Castor oil, Peter, my mother said. Fudge took castor oil and milk magnesia and prune juice, too. Lots of that. All the things that will help you get dribble out of Fudgy's tummy. We just have to wait, Dr. Cohn said. Probably until tomorrow or the day after. Fudge will have to spend the night here. 
but I don't think he's going to be swallowing anything that he ha isn't supposed to be swallowing from now on. How about Dribble, I asked. Will Dribble be all right? My mother and Dr. Cohn looked at each other. I knew the answer before he shook his head and said, I think you may have to get a new turtle, Peter. I don't want a new turtle, I said. Tears came to my eyes. I was embarrassed. I wiped them away and the back of my hand, then my nose started to run, and I had a sniffle. I want dribble, I said. That's the only turtle I want. My mother took me home in a taxi. She told my father was on his way to the hospital to be with Fudge. When we got home, she made me land chops for dinner, but I wasn't very hungry. My father came home late that night. I was still up. My father looked gloomy. He whispered to my mother, not yet, nothing yet. The next day was Sunday. No school. I spent the whole day at the hospital in the waiting room. There were plenty of people around. Magazines, books, too. It was like a hard bench in the emergency hallway. It was more like a living room. I had told everybody that my brother ate a turtle, and they looked at me with kind of funny. But nobody ever said they were sorry to hear about my turtle. Never, never once. My mother joined me for the supper in the hospital coffee shop. I ordered a hamburger, and I felt... I left most of it because right in the middle of supper, my mother told me if the medicine didn't work soon, Fudge would have to have an operation to get dribble out of him. My mother didn't eat anything. That night, my grandmother came to stay with me. My mother and father stayed at the hospital with Fudge. Things were pretty dreary at home. Every hour the phone rang. It was my mother calling from the hospital to report. Not yet. I see grandma repeating. Nothing happened yet? It, I was miserable. That, well, I was lonely. Grandma didn't notice. I even missed Fudge banging his pots and pans. The middle of the night, the phone rang again and woke me up. I crept out into the hallway and to hear that what was going on. Whoopee! It's out! Good news at last! She hung up and turned to me. The medicine has finally worked, Peter. All that castor oil, milk, and magnesia, and prune juice finally worked. The turtle is out. Alive or dead, I asked. Peter Warren Hatcher! What a question! grandma shouted. So my brother no longer had a turtle inside him, and I no longer had a turtle. I didn't like Fudge as much as I thought I did before the phone rang. The next morning, Fudge came home from the hospital. My father carried him to the apartment. My mother's arms were loaded with presents, all for Fudge. My mother put the presents down and kissed him. She said, Fudgy, can I have anything he wants, anything at all? Mommy's so happy her baby's all better. It was disgusting. Presents and kisses and attention for Fudge. I could have looked at I couldn't even look at him. He was having so much fun. He probably wasn't even sorry he ate my turtle. That night my father came home with the biggest box of all. It wasn't wrapped or anything, but I knew it was another present. I turned away from my father. Peter, he said, This box is a surprise for you. Well, I don't want anything but a turtle, I said. Don't you think you can make me feel better with another turtle? Because you can't. Who said anything about a turtle, son? Dad asked. You see, Peter, your mother and I think you've been a good sport about the whole situation. After all, Dribble was your pet. I looked up. Could I be hearing this right? Did they re really remember about me and Dribble? I put my hand inside the box. I felt something warm and soft and furry. I knew it was a dog, but I pretended to be surprised. When he jumped up on my lap and licked me, Fudgy cried, Ooh, doggy! See, doggy! He ran right over and grabbed my, dog, grabbed my dog's tail. Fudge, my father said, taking him away. This is your brother's dog. Maybe someday you'll have a dog of your own, but this one belongs to Peter. Do you understand? Fudge nodded. Peter's dog. That's right, my father said. Peter's dog. Then he turned to me. And just to be sure, son, he said, we got a dog that's going to grow quite big, much too big for your brother to swallow. We all laughed. My dog was neat. I named him Turtle to remind me.